Hey everybody, my name is Marcus Stewart, and welcome to Call It In The Ring, a wrestling recap and discussion show of all things WWE. We are talking about SmackDown Live, the November 13th show of 2018, and I'm feeling a lot better than I was um, on Monday Night Raw, both uh, physically, because if you listen to my Raw review, I probably sounded very sick. I'm still sick but I'm, I'm i'm on the i'm on the mend as they say i'm feeling a lot better they're kind of having a a good night's rest and it also helps that smackdown was a is consistently a, a more entertaining show it's just less of a of a drag to get through and uh this week in particular uh wow it's kind of all you can say after this episode um and We'll get right to those reasons uh, right now. Of course, just real quick as a reminder, if you did not listen to my Raw review, um, I said there that this will actually be the last weekly SmackDown and Raw episodes I will be doing uh, for the foreseeable future. And that going forward, I will be focusing primarily on reviewing the pay-per-views. Uh, the reason for this is just I've got a lot of uh, stuff going on just personally and professionally just uh, schedule uh, nothing bad nothing bad it's just uh, kind of transitioning I'm, I'm planning a move and I got all this other stuff that it's gotten harder to kind of keep up uh, with the to kind of watch the shows and then have to record and edit and get them up in the the timely manner that I'd like to so for at least for the time being it'll just be easier for me to um, focus only on reviewing the pay-per-views, and this might not be a forever thing, it might just be until things settle down, but after Survivor Series, you probably won't hear from me again until TLC, I think is the next pay-per-view, TLC, um, so yeah, just a heads up, and a, a sorry if, if that's disappointing, um, uh, if I encourage you to stick around, because, uh, one of the reasons I'm doing this is that I'm kind of trying to plan other other types of shows from my uh, YouTube channel and and uh, iTunes and my podcast, like just different ideas I want to kind of uh, tackle. So I kind of have to make room for it or for them, I should say. So yeah, that's pretty much the gist of it. And again, in case you didn't listen to Monday on Raw, but if you stick around, I appreciate it and I appreciate uh, your support. Listening to me nerd out and rant and or praise. All these episodes of Raw and SmackDown since I started this show. Greatly appreciate it, and you guys are the best. So, with that said, if I'm going to go out big, SmackDown definitely gave me a, a big show to uh, talk about for my last SmackDown. So, we open up with um, a recap, of course, of last night's or the previous night's Raw with the uh, women's rosters on both shows getting into the big melee. And it came out. I think right after this, that of course Becky got hurt during that melee, uh, very badly. And I said on Raw that I didn't catch what happened to her, and I didn't find out until after the fact, just like online, that it was apparently Nia Jax that straight up socked Becky like right in the face. And they showed the replay like multiple times, like the commentators are talking about it, and they show it in slow motion, and you can see it's like uh, Nia's like in the corner. And Becky, I don't think Becky was fighting her. I think I think Nia was fighting someone else. And then Becky came over and then just kind of like straight punched her like in the face. And it wound up broke, breaking her nose, though. The announcers said it as described it as a bro have she said that they said that Becky had a broken face, which is um one way to put it. <laughs> um, I guess it's not wrong it's just weird to say broken face and just not broken nose like maybe broken face just sounds more devastating i guess i don't know and also a severe concussion and that because of this becky can't compete at survivor series so the best 
match of the show, at least in terms of build-up, is gone. We, we've lost it just mere days before it was supposed to happen. And my lord, what an absolute bummer that is. Like, I've said the last couple weeks, because that's all there's that's all the build that Survivor Series has uh, has gotten, is that that is the only match in a show that had any real personal animosity, that had any real story behind it. Like, that may as well have main events at the show. And, uh, I mean, I don't think it would have, but who knows? We'll never know now. Um, and it's just, it sucks. I wanted to see that so bad. So bad. Like, the trash talking from both ladies has been phenomenal. And also just the... Like, how physical and technical that match could have been because uh, Becky's great and Ronda gets better with every match. And just, I, they just seem like their styles would mesh very well. So I was really, really intrigued by that matchup. And damn it, because Nia Jax threw a damn falcon punch. We don't get it now. And Nia, I mean, I know that, you know, Shit happens in wrestling. You get hurt. It ain't ballet, as the uh, the old adage goes. But kind of watching that replay over and over, you're like, what kind of punch was that? Like, that was just a straight, like, I'm, I'm not saying Nia did it on purpose, because of course she didn't, because why would she? Um, but it, it just came off as more, like, reckless. And I don't want to, like, come across as, like, know-it-all-y or judgy, because I'm not a wrestler. I don't know how to throw a, a working punch as they say, but just, when you see the replay, it's like, oh my god, like, how do you, the, Jesus, like, that was, like, that was almost, like, full force to look like, or it must have been, because it, it broke Becky's face, as they say, um, so, I don't know, maybe Nia wasn't paying attention, or was just in the heat of the moment, I mean, those aren't really excuses, because, I mean, Roman Reigns throws Superman punches, or he did, on the regular, and never once, um, actually hurt anybody, uh, so, yeah, I don't know what is gonna happen with Nia, on top of that, other than that she's getting a lot of shit online and will probably be pretty hated uh, going forward because she robbed us of this main event. Um, so which WWE can certainly use to their advantage if they want to for this feud of like, hey, she's going to challenge Ronda next. And this is the lady that not only is she huge, but she murdered the SmackDown Women's Champion with one punch. How is Ronda Rousey going to stand up to that? So they that will probably be what they do with it because that just seems like WWE. But yeah... Naya, man, gotta, gotta work on those, gotta work on those working punches, I guess, it seems like, at least, so, anyways, now that we've gotten that established, and we'll get back to this later in the show, AJ Styles comes out to talk about his match with Brock Lesnar, and he more or less just kind of promises that he's gonna win this time, because last year, even though he threw everything he got, Brock won, but AJ had him on the ropes, Brock was limping out of the ring in that he has since then become a better at tapping people out because he tapped out Daniel Bryan, he tapped out Samoa Joe, and he almost did it to Brock last year. And this year, while AJ's gotten better, Brock has gotten more vulnerable, at least in AJ's opinion. So this year's his uh Brock's calf is his, basically, is what AJ's saying. Your calf, your calves are mine. You will be next. The other calf. Um, this brings out Paul Heyman from the crowd. Um, again, WB security is, is awful. It's one thing for Becky Lynch and the women's roster to sneak into the buildings. At least they're like athletes. Like you could say, like maybe they just beat the shit out of security. Uh, Paul Heyman's just a, a fat guy. So I don't know how he got past everybody. <laughs> um, but he makes his way to ringside. Uh, AJ says, let him in. And AJ's at, or Paul is at the, the ring announcer area. And he, does his whole Brock Lesnar's the best spiel. Um, and then saying that, hey, uh, Brock is going to kill you, AJ, and he can't wait to do it. And then he brings up Daniel Bryan and goes into a little thing saying that, um, describing AJ as the one of the best in-ring performers in WWE history, which is absolutely true, and not just WWE, but really of, of our generation. Um, kind of listing him alongside guys like Ric Flair, Ricky Steamboat, Shawn Michaels, and but he throws in the caveat saying that AJ is up there, but he's only the second best in ring performer of this of this era, and that number one is Daniel Bryan. And kind of kind of random to throw Daniel's name out there like that. And um, AJ takes offense to that because of his you know his uh, signature pride, saying that you know. 
Daniel's great, but you seem to forget that I tapped him out not long ago. This brings out Brian, who's looking noticeably uh, peeved, annoyed, saying that he does not understand why his name is being thrown around right now, but he doesn't appreciate it, and that, you know, while he did lose to AJ and he, he accepts that, he still wants a reason to punch AJ in the face, and that if AJ uses his name one more time, he will do so. AJ, not backing down, kind of, it's like a weird thing where he, he says Daniel's name, but it's kind of, it's actually like a, a compliment saying, like he's, he's like, oh, so I shouldn't say that one of the best in-ring technicians in the game right now is Daniel Bryan? Um, I don't know if he meant that sarcastically, but I mean, it, he's not wrong. He, he, Daniel is one of the best in-ring technicians in the company, if not the best. And Bri that's enough for Brian, who uh, proceeds to attack AJ. And him and AJ get into a big old brawl. Shane McMahon has to come out with a bunch of uh, agents and refs to try to pull him apart. And he's yelling at him. And that's kind of how we opened the show. So it was kind of, uh, kind of random. Just like I said, the way Daniel kind of get, gets kind of shoehorned like why is Heyman even mentioning Daniel like what's the reasoning behind that and we'll get and this does play off in a big way later on and we'll, we'll I'll kind of go into that more once we get to that so but yeah that's how the show started and then we get we come back from break uh AJ or Daniel is in Paige's locker room with Shane Shane and Daniel are yelling at each other Shane's saying that Daniel should know better I'm assuming because you know Daniel at one time was GM so he's like you should know better than to lose your head like that uh aj comes in to try to get his hands on him and everyone is just in the camera frame right now you see bodies and yelling and then shane says okay aj you want it is this what you want well tonight you're going to be defending your WWE championship against daniel bryan get the hell out of here and yeah we have a championship match right before survivor series i'm sure nothing will happen um this brings us to our first match of the night andrade cian almost with Zelina Vega taking on Jeff Hardy. And this was a solid match, as you would expect. Uh, Andrade's awesome. Hardy is always totally fine. Um, I like Jeff a lot. And uh, this is a just a, just a solid back-and-forth match, though. Uh, Jeff picked up the win, somewhat surprisingly. I thought Andrade would pick it up here, and he probably should have, because Andrade um, kind of is in, in dire need of a big win. Whereas Jeff is at the point of his career where he can kind of eat losses and he'll always be over no matter what. Like, it only takes one, either one win or one death-defying stunt to get him back up to, uh, I guess, uh, top-level status. You just have to jump off something high and he's good. Uh, whereas Andrade is still establishing himself, so I, I feel like uh, Andrade should have gotten a nod here, but um, at least, if nothing else, is like, to consolation at least he's getting to rub shoulders with all of these uh big names because now he's been in the ring and has had good good to great matches with mysterio with styles um and now hardy he just needs to to just beat one of them now to really get him going but i think i i'm not writing i'm not writing andrade off yet in terms of like the office giving up on him or anything like that i think he's still i think he's still got a very bright future ahead of him hopefully uh, backstage, we see the Miz with Paige, and they're watching, they were watching the last match with Hardy, and Miz, who, if we've, I'd forgotten about this because of just everything that's happened, but, you know, Miz and Brian are co-captains of the SmackDown Survivor Series team, however, Paige and Miz, uh, kind of talk about and confirm that Brian is now off of the team, so Miz is the sole captain, and I guess it's because, of what Brian did earlier in the night, like his actions were like, well, he can't be on the team. And I guess last week too, when uh, Brian beat the shit out of <laughs> Miz, Shane and AJ. So uh, he's off the team now, which in hindsight, it's kind of another uh, red flag about what's coming later on in the night. Like, okay, he's not, what is Brian going to be doing at Survivor Series then? Um, and instead Miz decides to add Jeff Hardy to the, to uh, replace Brian and then he tries to take Ray off of the team because Ray and Samoa Joe are in the room with them. And he's like, well, since Daniel's off the team, we need a clean slate and I don't want any of his picks. So, Ray, you're gone. Uh, Paige says, not so fast. I'm the GM. I think Ray should stay. And how about if you fight him tonight? If Ray beats you, he gets to stay on the team. Uh, Miz is uh, decidedly not happy about this, but he does have the Marine 6 out. He has a copy of it. 
holding it. And that's the only Murray movie I think I actually want to see just because of the absurdity uh, and randomness of Miz teaming up with Shawn Michaels, uh, who still has his hair in this, in this movie. So that's, that makes it worth watching alone to fight bad guy, Becky Lynch. And that just, every ad for it looks hysterical. And I, I think I'm going to have to watch that. <laughs> so yeah, that's a match later on in the night. Next up, we get an interview with Shinsuke Nakamura, United States champion, and the and he is uh, decidedly uh, he, not interested in what the interview later has to say because he's got uh, his phone with his headphones in, and she's trying to ask him about Seth Rollins. Like, hey, what do you uh, what do you think about Seth Rollins? You're facing him this Sunday, and Shinsuke says he takes offense to what Rollins said on Raw when he, Seth basically said that he did not care about Shinsuke or was not worried about him basically because he has a bigger fish to fry in terms of Ambrose and that uh Seth broke Nakamura's heart by seemingly looking past him and then he reveals that what he has on his phone is a a video of that promo and Shinsuke says that he Seth might not care about him but all he's been doing is thinking about Seth and he's I guess he's been re-watching that promo constantly and he's saying that um, if uh, if Seth doesn't start paying attention to him, he'll just have to uh, break his face because one broken face in the company isn't enough right now. <laughs> so, but yeah, a uh, good little promo here from Nakamura. I liked it. We get the Miz taking on Rey Mysterio next. Uh, Miz gives, comes out with a copy of the Marine Six, which I wish I was in the crowd so that he could throw it to me because then I can watch it uh, for free. Uh, this is another fine match. You know, this is the third time these two have fought in as many weeks, uh, like four weeks, maybe, um, just a totally solid back and forth match. You know, Mysterio still looks awesome and probably looks this run has been, he has looked the best in this run than his last kind of two years, I'd say in, in his original WWE run, but like 2013, 2014, he was looking kind of bloated. And it could still kind of go, but you could tell that he was kind of worn out. Like, he looks... And he has... Like, I've seen some of his stuff on the indie since then. Um, but, yeah, like, just the way he's kind of trimmed down, like, physically, gotten in better shape. Like, he looks like the Rey Mysterio of the 2000s, um, rather than maybe the twenty the 2010s. Or So, it's been, um, it's been a lot of fun watching um, this reinvigorated Rey Mysterio come back. Because Rey is arguably the best high flyer of all time. Uh, Ray once again manages to defeat Miz. He hits the 619 and then goes for the uh, top rope splash. Uh, Miz gets his knees up and gets a close two fall. But unfortunately, Miz, instead of kind of following up on that near fall, he kind of sits up and he's kind of just like, oh, god damn it, how can I beat this Ray Mysterio fella? Uh, and then, uh, Ray Mysterio activates the surprise pin from like SmackDown versus Raw, the kind of possum pin, and he rolls up Miz from behind with a crucifix and gets the win. So, Pretty nice finish there, and Ray is still on the team. And it's crazy because like every time I look at the team graphics, like the Raw versus SmackDown team, it makes me viscerally upset to see Shane McMahon in there again for the third year in a row. Like the first year was kind of like okay, like sure I guess, even though it was a stretch. Um, the second year you're like okay, like again, really, we're we're doing this again. And now this year, it's like, okay, no, there's no reason whatsoever. Like, this is the most shoehorned year. Like, literally, at least the first two years had some storyline reason for it. Uh, this year has been just like, well, we just can't. There just there just can't be five guys. It's like, why does, like, there's so many guys you could put in Shane's spot. Especially when you look at Ross' team. Like, Ross' team is all active talent and looks like a, a best of I mean, obviously, Rollins and Ambrose aren't in it, but because they're busy with their own thing. Um, but when you put the two teams together, like, Shane is clearly the, you know, when you do the one of these things is not like the other. It's like, man, like, instead of Shane, it could have been Andrade or Rusev or Orton. Orton's not. Oh, wait. No, is Orton in? Wait, is Orton on the team? No. Wait, it's Miz, Joe, Ray, Jeff. No, Orton's not on the team. Why is Orton not on the team, but Shane is? That's weird. Um, so yeah, Randy Orton, maybe the prime example of a guy that should absolutely be on the team and is not because Shane McMahon has to have a spot. Um, so yeah, that's weird. And speaking of Randy Orton, after Rey Mysterio wins, 
Orton comes out of nowhere and tries to attack Rey, uh, Rey Mysterio again. This time, Rey is ready for it. He uh, ducks it. And kind of a funny bit, uh, Randy instead bumps into Miz, who has stood back up, but is still kind of woozy. He's in the, like, Mortal Kombat finish him state. And Orton instead just RKO's Miz, because why not? He's there. And that allows Rey to escape. So, um... We won't probably, you know, this won't kick off in full until next week when this Raw vs. SmackDown uh, nonsense is passed. So a lot of the stories, like, Ray vs. Orton is one of those stories that's kind of in a holding pattern because you can't pay it off at this pay-per-view. Um, it's right, it's there with uh, Ambrose and Rollins, as well as, like, Nia and Ronda. Like, you got all these feuds just kind of in the chamber waiting for this pay-per-view to pass, so. But... I'm excited to see Ray versus uh, Orton. Makes sense, and those two work well together. So, next up, Paige comes out, and she brings out the women's roster, um, which of course is the uh, the women's Survivor Series team as well. But it's the entire women's roster, and the idea is that Becky is going to come out, and she is going to handpick her replacement to face Ronda Rousey, and Becky comes out to a huge uh, reception. And sporting an equally large uh, black eye. Like, her face is, um, her face looks, uh, broken, as Matt Hardy would say. But this brokenness does not turn Becky into an insane person. It just makes her really angry, as she herself says that she is, she is not happy. And she does not look happy. And I don't, and I don't think that's just her character. I mean, understandably, I, she's got to be pretty pissed off. And she looks like, you can feel kind of how disappointed and upset she is. Like, she is not smiling. And granted, she's a heel and she shouldn't be. But you you, you can kind of tell, like, the reality is that not, the reality has sunk in that she is not getting to face this dream opponent and Ronda Rousey in what was the biggest match of SummerSlam in terms of the hype. Like, what wrestler wouldn't be disappointed to kind of lose out in a spot for just the dumbest of reasons? Um, especially like nothing to do with her just cause, uh, another coworker was kind of careless. Um, so she's saying that, uh, she's mad, but damn it turns it into another just great promo. Like she is Becky, you know, I kind of criticized her heel run initially because it seems like she was trying a little too hard to be a heel. Like just kind of like reading from the heel playbook of what you're supposed to say and act. Now she's kind of grown into it, and, and I think since she's gotten away from Charlotte, um, she has really turned it on. Um, and she's saying that um, even though she's, she's like she could kick Ronda's ass even with a concussion and all this, and saying that Ronda isn't the baddest bitch on the planet, she's just the luckiest because of what happened. So now... And the crowd is eating this up. Like, Becky is, my God, Becky might be the most over person in the company right now. And uh, with that said, she's got to pick someone to finish what she started. So she walks down the line, kind of staring down each competitor or each of her her fellow women. And they all want to go. Um, Charlotte, the only two that people give kind of like any real reaction towards are Charlotte. Um, Naomi kind of got one. And then Asuka easily got the biggest one, and Asuka was ready for it. Like, she was, like, yelling at um, Becky to pick her, and I wanted Asuka. And, but she does not choose Asuka. She go, doubles back and looks at Charlotte and says to basically get it done. Make her tap out. Let's, you, you need to do it. I, I know you can, you know, you can do this. Um, Charlotte still looking, um... I, Charlotte's still kind of selling, like, her recent kind of, like, like, her being unsure of herself, like, losing to Becky at Evolution has rocked Charlotte's confidence, because remember, she still never accepted the leadership position of the SmackDown women's team, because she just, her confidence is shook, so she still kind of looks a little unsure, but Becky kind of, um, kind of, uh, hypes her up a little bit, not, like, in a crazy, like, loud way, but she just kind of gets really serious with her and says, like, you need to get this done. And I guess the idea is like the fact that I hate your guts, but I respect you enough to know that you're the best person for this job um, maybe is enough to kind of restore Charlotte's confidence. And they shake hands and then they hug, which is 
weird. I think maybe a little bit too much. I mean, the handshake at least would have been like a respect thing of like, oh no, we, we hate each other, but we can't not respect each other, especially after everything we've done to each other. Um, the, the, the hug for me was a little, little too much of like, no, you guys are supposed to like hate each other's guts. Um, but the crowd seemed to react well to it. But so yeah, Charlotte will now be facing Ronda Rousey, which is kind of insane because I think most people either assumed or predicted that the main event of WrestleMania 35 next year would be Ronda Rousey and Charlotte Flair, um, likely for one of the one of the show titles, and we're getting it this Sunday with no build up whatsoever. Um, we're just it's just happening, and on there's two. I feel like there's two or maybe three ways to look at this. On one hand, this is kind of mind boggling of like so. If you're if I mean again, this is this was never confirmed to be the main event, so this is this isn't like you can't blame WWE of like breaking a promise because like we haven't even started to talk about what the wrestlemania card would be at this point because why would we so it's but i guess the expectation of these two saving these keeping these two apart until wrestlemania is kind of gone now so i mean if they do it anyway will it lose some of that specialness because like what they faced before now so it doesn't have that novelty of like we've never seen the two, you know, Ronda has run through everybody, but now she has to face the top woman, the top woman on the roster. Um, now they'll have a, a history, and um, so it, it loses a bit of that luster. Um, and then there's the other thing of like, you could have saved that match for WrestleMania because Asuka was right there. Like, Asuka's right there. Like, you could have just done Asuka against Ronda and then still kept Charlotte and Ronda for WrestleMania. Um, And Asuka is the other person next to Charlotte that I would love to see take on Ronda. Like, imagine how physical of a match that would be between, like, Ronda and Asuka would just beat the shit out of each other. (laughs) Um, And I think think the crowd agrees, because like I said, Asuka got the biggest reaction when Becky was deciding who to pick. Um, So that would have been an easy layup. At the same time, though, on the other hand, that I thought of was like, Maybe they've changed their minds. Maybe because of how big Becky has gotten, this is kind of a blessing in disguise that lets them change things up. We're like, do Charlotte and Ronda here? Because now, what if Becky main events WrestleMania against Ronda? Like, suddenly, that's a legitimately big match because it was built up here, and now we're not getting it. So now you have that door open of like, these two are going to fade because Ron, even Becky said during her promo that she said, like, this, this isn't like over between her and Rhonda. Like, this, we're, I'm going to get you sooner or later. So now you got the seed planet for like WrestleMania 35 main event, Rhonda versus Becky. Now you have months of build up for it because we were supposed to get it and then we didn't. But the build up for it initially was so good that now I, like, I want to see it. Like, I want to see it even more now, now that it's been taken away from me. Um, so do it on the biggest stage of them all. And we know that these two can like have a good buildup because their, their shit talking into each other was fantastic. So now you've got something to work with. So this could work out where like, you know, Charlotte versus Ronda is obviously a big match, but this is bigger just because it's now got months of backstory that you can put behind it of like waiting and waiting. Like when's Becky gonna, when's Becky gonna come back? When's Becky gonna get Ronda? When, when are they gonna do it? So that's the that's what I'm gonna subscribe to here. I'm gonna stake my flag and predict that that will be the main event of WrestleMania 35. Now is Becky versus Ronda, waiting for months in Survivor Series, and now we're finally gonna get it. Hopefully, there will be no face breaking this time, and that match will be will be all the hotter because of it. So, in the meantime, Charlotte will be taking on Ronda, and that should be, that should still be a hell of a match. Um, uh, backstage, Flair is interviewed, and she talks about how she's fought against Becky, she's fought with Becky, but now she has to fight for Becky, and that she, and she looks at the camera and talks directly to Ronda, saying that the queen is coming, is basically gonna 
kick her ass for in for SmackDown, which is the only part of the promo I didn't like because I, I was like, oh yeah, this is about brand supremacy and not just about being the the best woman on the roster. So I, I was like, oh, I mean, that's not Charlotte's fault. That's just the company line right now. I was like, oh, I wish it was just like. Charlotte just saying like I'm gonna beat you because I'm the queen and I'm gonna prove that I'm like I've always proven that I'm the best I'm the top dog in this division and you're in my way of proving that now so here we go and not like I gotta win for SmackDown <laughs> um but regardless like I said Charlotte versus Ronda should be uh something special if they give it the time the New Day take on the Bar and the Big Show in a six man tag. Uh, this match is nothing special. It's totally fine, but nothing special. Uh, the bad guys pick up the win when Big Show punches Kofi out of the air because jumping at the Big Show is a terrible idea. It's almost as bad as jumping at Randy Orton. Uh, but yeah, totally nothing match here. Backstage, we get a cool little uh, little promo here with the Usos. Um, they've got the other SmackDown tag teams in like this kind of dark foggy hallway like it kind of looks like an alley like in a street but it's it's like the backstage hallway like it's dim it's fog everywhere and we see primo and epico who every time i see them i have to remind myself like oh shit they still work here uh primo and epico uh gallows and anderson who are another team i haven't seen in a long time i was i was wondering if one of them were hurt or something i was like when was the last time gallows and anderson have been on smackdown um but they're there and then sanity Sans Nikki Cross and Nikki Cross also was not included with the women in the previous segment so I can only assume that Nikki's surprise appearance last week was was just that a one-off appearance so maybe she hasn't been called up yet after all which is uh unfortunate but the Usos go down the line talking to them hyping them up because the Usos are the, the captains of the the tag team elimination tag match it's just still weird to think about it's like an elimination tag match featuring the entire tag division of both shows, basically. And each team is led by a tag team. Do you get that? Is that clear? Um, anyway, the Usos go down each team, hyping them up, throwing them SmackDown t-shirts, saying, we got you, man. It's like, man, good brothers, gals and Anderson, getting everybody hyped. Sanity, we gonna cause chaos. Like, And then they do this cool bit at the end where like they like the Usos are in the front and all the tags are behind them and they look at the camera and the Uso welcomes the raw tag team division to the SmackDown penitentiary. And I thought this was really cool. It was, it was creative the way it was shot, like the angles of it. Um, it fit the Usos characters and just, yeah, good stuff here. It was, it was one of those things where you kind of take like a nothing, uh, just a nothing idea and turn it into something creative. So good work. This brings us to our main event, Daniel Bryan taking on AJ Styles for the WWE Championship. This is Daniel's second attempt at uh, trying to win the title from Styles after losing to him uh, like two weeks ago. And this is another really good match between two of the best in-ring performers of our generation. Um, They both kind of told the story where Daniel was targeting AJ's arm and shoulder during the match to set up the yes lock, which makes sense. And AJ was countering by targeting Daniel's leg to set up the calf crusher, which again makes sense because that's what he's beaten Daniel with before. He's beaten the submission master with a submission. So of course he would try to do that again, especially after the promo he cut earlier. Um, yeah, just some great fast paced action, some cool counters. Uh, at one point, Brian hit like this huge top rope back suplex to AJ, uh, for a big old crash. And yeah, like a lot of just great back and forth. It's almost hard to, to break it down. I can't really criticize anything either. This was just a very good match between these two. And then we get to the very surprising ending where AJ goes for a phenomenal forearm. Uh, Brian ducks and AJ winds up nailing the referee, uh, Charles Robinson. So he goes down. And then AJ turns around and Brian kicks him low. Just a good old nut shot. AJ's worst enemy his 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 kryptonite from the shinsuke nakamura feud um has come back brian's been watching the tapes and like i know aj's weak point <clears throat> so uh maybe he maybe they should show like a video of like maybe brian was talking to nakamura backstage and knocks like hey go for it go for his balls his balls are weak he does not like it when you take a a knee to balls but uh that's my Shinsuke Nakamura. And yeah, he hits him low. And Brian's in the corner and he's looking. He's got a wild-eyed look in his eyes. 
Like, the crowd is, of course, understandably shocked that Brian would take such a shortcut, especially given that Brian, during the Miz feud, went on and on about how he only fights with honor, would never do anything underhanded because that was the main difference between him and the Miz. But here, Brian's looking super intense. Like, that's, he is in the zone. And and AJ recovers, and Brian hits one hell of a running knee that sends AJ inside out. And Brian gets the win, and Daniel Bryan is the new WWE champion. He has ended AJ Styles' year-long reign, which, crazy enough, started on an episode of SmackDown, and now it has ended on an episode of SmackDown. And... Yeah, the crowd understandably was shocked at this. It showed some some nice crowd reactions of people like, holy crap. You know, it's always shocking when you see a world title change on the TV shows because that's such a rarity, as it should be. And um, just days before Survivor Series. So now Daniel Bryan will be facing Brock Lesnar at Survivor Series in the champion versus champion match, which was originally supposed to happen at SummerSlam 2014, when Brian won the world title in the main event of WrestleMania 30, uh, according to Brian himself, the plan was for him to hold it until SummerSlam, where he was supposed to lose it to Brock. Of course, about a month into his reign, that's when he went down with his injury and had to surrender the title. And then John Cena became the glorified uh, transitional champion and the sacrificial lamb to Brock Lesnar instead. But yeah, that was the apparently that was the original plan was Brian versus uh, Brock way back then. Which I remember at the time thinking like, man, I would have wanted to see that. Just this, that's such an interesting matchup to me. And now we're going to get it here. Um, It's kind of insane because, I mean, AJ versus Brock had at least some, had build behind it. And they had a, they had last year's match to build off of. So it's like, why, why change it up for a matchup now that has no build up? You know, Brian versus Lesnar has no build up. Plus Brian's a heel now. So it's a heel versus heel match. So who do you, you know, like, who do you go for? And and after the match, uh, Brian solidified his heel turn by kicking AJ in the head. He's holding the title. He's looking like he's in a trance almost. And he's got this evil little smile on his face, like, kind of like, um, kind of like tasting the, the forbidden fruit of like, oh, I just did something really bad. But it felt so good, like like he was cutting loose. And yeah, he kicks AJ in the head and then proceeds to, to beat the shit out of AJ for a while. He's like stomping on his head pretty uh, brutally and j- puts him in the yes lock, just just beating him up here. Then he gets the title again and he's looking at it again like, like I said, the like the forbidden fruit. Like, oh man, this is, I can see why Miz cheats all the time. This feels pretty damn great. Like he just had this look of glee. Um... But yeah, like, why not save this until next week's SmackDown? J- purely because of, like I said, like now Brian's fighting Brock, which is a big match and one I would like to see, but there's no build up for it whatsoever. It's just going to be, oh, they're fighting each other and now they're both heels. So, and Brian's the, the clear underdog. So it's like, are we supposed to, and he's not going to win probably. So like Brian's. Uh, kind of establishing that he's the new top heel on SmackDown, but he's probably going to get destroyed by Brock. I mean, you know, like he can't like the, the appeal of Brock versus Brian is that it's the ultimate underdog David versus Goliath match of like, I, I, the, it, it'd be entertaining. Cause I want to see Brian fighting from underneath with that babyface fire that he's so good at trying to throw everything he can at this monster and not giving up but now that he's a heel it's like okay, but now he's an asshole so you got this asshole who's supposed to be the top heel now but he's in over his head seemingly against brock so it's just a weird dynamic and i don't know maybe he'll lose because aj costs him the match that would make sense i could see aj running in and screwing brian over and giving brock the win um but regardless, that'll like to kind of kick off this new reign with Brian eating a big loss is questionable. Like, if anything, why not have Styles retain and have Brian cost AJ the match on Sunday and then set up the WWE Championship match the next week? Because like that would make sense. After, like if you do that same promo earlier tonight, like they they still get into the big brawl, but and then they still have this match, but. Or maybe they don't have the match. Maybe they just get into the brawl. 
and AJ's upset with him and Brian's upset. But AJ goes on to face Brock. Daniel Bryan comes out. I know I'm armchair booking, but, you know, which is a little frowned upon sometimes, but I'm just going to do it. Um, Brian comes out, cost AJ the match out of just anger at AJ and just frustration. And then next week, a very pissed off AJ is like, you want to go? Let's do it. I'll put the title on the line and then then have Brian win. And then you're free to just build Brian up as this new top heel on SmackDown. But instead, of, like I said, if you do it here, he's got to face this unstoppable thing and he's a monster, but Brian's more of a babyface guy. Uh, it's just a weird dynamic. It's a weird decision. It seems like they only did it for for shock value of like, oh, but you wouldn't have guessed that. Huh? Like, see, anything can happen in wrestling. We just changed the entire Survivor Series card for the most part. Um, but yeah, it's one of those things where like, that seems like, whoa. And then you kind of think about it for longer than five seconds and you go like, uh, this might have been better if you just waited, just waited one week and then do it. Um, so yeah, I, I want to see Brian versus Brock. I just don't know if I want to see it under these conditions. So we'll see how the match goes, but a great match and Brian as a heel makes sense. I think his, um, his baby face run has been good, but it's been, obviously he has not caught fire like he did back in 2014, just because the roster is so much bigger now. Like there's so many other guys that the fans can get behind, like Rollins and Styles and, you know, I mean, Roman's not there anymore, but, you know, Balor, like, the roster's changed so much, like, WWE has changed so much in the, in just the few short years during Brian's absence that, I guess in a sense, he's not that special anymore in terms of, like, the, the smaller indie guy that's trying to get to the top, because now we have several smaller indie guys get to the top and stay there, um, so, like, you know, like, the, the original Yes movement was such lightning in a bottle that it was not, it was never going to be duplicated again, and it and it hadn't been. And I feel like some fans were, at least to me, I got to feel like some fans might be turning on Brian around the time that they that they've done this. So I, it's smart that they did turn him heel because turning heel was what got him big in the first place. Like that's where the yes chant came from was when he was a douchebag heel and just chanting yes to be obnoxious. Um, so I'm curious to see what new kind of like what new spin. Or, or, or character tweak he might introduce with this this new turn um if nothing else he's a giant hypocrite now because of what again what he said with the miz but um i think my main issue is that the timing just seems off like just i feel like this the, like thinking about just waiting a week and doing it seems way more ideal and and sensible than this so We'll see how this plays out, I guess. Um, but yeah, crazy SmackDown. Survivor Series has changed a lot in just a day. <laughs> or, um, so unless something happens throughout the week, maybe Brian walks into a damn pole and he breaks his face and then he can't compete either. So we got to get a new... AJ has to win its idol back or something. Uh, hopefully not. I mean, just for Brian's health. Uh but yeah, crazy show, crazy show, but, but not boring, not boring, definitely. And that wraps up SmackDown and that wraps up this episode of Call It In The Ring. So thanks for listening, guys. Um, if you want to follow me on Twitter and reach out to me there, you can do so at Marcus Stewart 7 That's the number seven. You can find this show on other formats such as YouTube, iTunes, and Podbean. Just search for Marcus Writes About Games. You can also find, if you're into video games, I, I do a lot of, actually primarily what I do is cover and write about video games. I have a personal website, marcuswritesaboutgames.wordpress.com, where you can find like written reviews and features for all things gaming. You can also check out my other video game podcast, Carving Gaming Rushmores, well, where me and two rotating guests uh, determine the top four examples of a specific video game topic. If you're into Dungeons and Dragons, I appear on two podcasts for that. Uh, one campaign is called We Wanted Adventurers, and the other is called Dragon Guard. And they're both very entertaining and just ridiculous and over the top and hilarious. Some great improv. And you can find both of those campaigns on uh, either extralife.com as well as SoundCloud and Lipson. Once again, it's called We Wanted Adventurers, and the other is Dragon Guard. So thanks for tuning in to what will be the final SmackDown review, at least for the uh, foreseeable future. 
I will see you again at Survivor Series, breaking down what's now a very different show, and then for the other uh, pay-per-views or network events going forward. So thanks for listening, guys. I hope you'll stick around going forward, and I'll see you after Sunday.